Hi everyone, it's Krillius, Team Racing Productions MC and producer. And today with me, of course, once again, the legendary Racing Pen Darvis. Hey, mother. Wow. Greetings and salutations. Wow. Oh. <laughs> How are you? I am wonderful. And we are here with... Oh, this is where I come in. I am Lee Levinson Perrine. I am the founders of, founder of Makers Lab. Uh, we create experiences here in D.C. that celebrate life, art, and queer culture. Uh, we took a break for a little bit, but we just came back uh, this past April and relaunched. And now we have a focus on zero proof events because I'm a person in recovery. And so I'm excited about this next chapter. Awesome. That, awesome. That's amazing. So that's tell us, um, how, how are you personally handling the pandemic? Um, you know, I think like a lot of folks, those first two weeks, it was rough, right? Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know how to respond. It was, it was difficult to interact with people. Um, I was triggered a lot. And so um, I really had to like, to just take it easy and just not feel guilty if I couldn't be productive at work or if I didn't want to talk to people on the phone. Um, but then I realized I was like, I need to try to like get out of this, right? And so I started to like practice more of a routine and started walking every morning drinking water, eating vegetables. My family started having weekly phone calls and that's really helped me kind of get through this time. Um, and then it's also during that time that I made the decision to focus on Black in Space, which is a virtual Black Pride Festival. And just creating that space and collaborating with so many folks is bringing me a lot of joy right now. And I think helping me get through is, which is one of the like weirdest and toughest experiences I've ever been through and everybody's probably been through, right? Oh, definitely, of course. And you know, you brought up Black in Space. So yeah. tell us more about that, about this virtual Black Pride tea that you're giving. Yeah. Um, so, I'm still, weekend. yeah. Yeah, no, thank you for asking. I'm still trying to figure out the words for it, but you know, it's really like um, Earth is, my friend Blue says, that Earth is tripping, meet me in space, right? And so, this <laughs> idea of like, you know, like all these like Black queer people getting on a spaceship, right? Mm -hmm. And let's just leave for five days and like celebrate each other and have joy and music. I'm trying to figure out how to have a potato salad challenge, like just like all the things and um, really like celebrate us and come together and build community and recognizing like, it's not gonna be the same as if we're in person, but this is what we have right now. And so we're very innovative people. And so we're gonna find a way to make this work and just celebrate, celebrate black folks, black pride, and especially like DC, because although I'm not a native Washingtonian, I've been here for 18 years. And so I like to say I'm definitely rooted um, in this community. It's great. I mean, it's a, an amazing idea, uh, a pride celebration via the virtual experience, you know, and what that may look like. You know, you talk about five days, you could have a day of history, a day of poetry, a day of music, a day of this, a day of that, you know, and, and so much collaboration can be done in those five days celebration via Zoom. Via yeah, yeah, you know, and we're actually you two. You we're know, gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be the boom boom on the on the Zoom, honey. <laughs> right, well, there's a couple of things like so we're gonna be using a different program from Zoom. So we're gonna we're gonna try some new technology, hoping that it works. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm glad that you brought up the history because you know, like racing, one of the first times I saw you, it was when we were like you hosted an event I worked on called like Black Transcendence, right? And like the way you grounded that space and talked about the history, like I'll always remember that day. And then I was there in February when you did Living Black History and like for me, it's really important through this experience that people understand the history of DC Black Pride and that it all started here and why it started here. And so weaving that history throughout the five days is like, it's just really, really important to me. Well, and I'm you know, looking forward to how that unfolds. Me and too, me part too. Of it And having my team wrap itself around that and how we can make that partner and collaborate with you on that Black and I love I love the word play with that too because I like how you explained it with you know space and you know earth is tripping girls so <laughs> we are just like giving it we're in space but also you're creating this space for black people you know mm -hmm. this this space that we can all come together and we've always known that safe spaces are so important for our community and the yeah. intersection of communities that we all inhabit and that you know we are we we are all around so it is just great that you are doing something so great and so important and also let our viewers know more about um the makers lab how it started um and now that you're back and putting this great mm -hmm. thing on yeah so we um originally launched in april of 2014 again with the same mission of you know celebrating life art and queer culture 
Um, and so we wanted to show like how multidimensional like, you know, queer folks are. And so we did a variety of events. We did body positive workout classes. We did film screenings. Um, we did book readings. We, you know, we celebrated the 20th anniversary, like does your mama know because of that really important work. And then we were very proud to be part of a team called Honey Groove, right? Which was this like black, you know, LGBTQ music festival, which was headlined by Big Frida in 2017. Mm -hmm. um, so we did like really That's dynamic amazing. team events. All right, when they get it. <laughs> it <was insane>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, with that though, like community events, as you all know, often don't make a lot of money or like break even. And so I was like, oh well, how are we gonna fund the lab? And so we started throwing parties, right? And we became known for our Beyonce party. And before you know it, like the parties are what took over, and some of the other community events kind of got lost. And I got lost in it too, mm. quite frankly, with like my addiction. And so I really had to take a step back and take care of myself. And now that I feel a lot better, I'm creating it in a way that feels more aligned with who I am as a person. And so I'm definitely excited um, about this like next chapter of Makers Lab and, and how we're gonna like build community together. Definitely. And you know, speaking about mental health and addiction, mm -hmm. what kind of advice or hope do you want to give to people out there, whether queer people, anybody out there, especially during this time that's so um, solitary and insular and isolating, you know, that can help them during this time? You know, I started doing well when I said to myself two things, like one, I have everything I need. And then two, I don't have to be strong, right? What I have to do is call on my friends, call on my family, call on my network and just be like, I'm struggling today. Mm -hmm. Like I need to talk to somebody. I need to, I need to go on a walk. You know what I mean? And just be okay with not being okay too. Right. And so realize accepting this time for what it is like this, in some ways I've been very inspired, but again, this is, this is a tough time and it's not easy. And I'm not expecting to always have it all figured out. And like, you know, some days that I'm like, you know, I'm on 10 and I got all the ideas. And then the next day, like, I just kind of want to like sit in my chair, you know? And so I give myself a lot of grace um, during this time. And, and yeah, I definitely reach out for support because it is important for me to maintain my sobriety during this time. And so that really means me like calling on my family and friends for support. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Well, you know, it's so great to have you here. It's so wonderful to have you here. Tell us, how can the audience, you know, support you, follow you, do all of that, support the Makers Lab, yeah. get more information, get in touch. Tell us, plug okay, it up. We got all the social medias, except the TikTok. I'm not, I'm not ready for all that. <laughs> but um, let's see. So we're on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all are at Makers Lab DC. Our website is makerslabdc.co, um, not .com, but .co. Mm -hmm. um, black in space is B L K N S P A C E dot com. Uh, so that has all the information uh, for the festival. And so one of the things I'll say about the festival is like you'll go there and you'll see ticket prices, but um, finances are not going to be an issue for people to get on the ship, right? So if you don't have finances, just send us a note. We'll take care of you. But everybody's coming to this party, right? To this celebration. Like other folks in community will donate tickets so that everyone can take part in the celebration. So don't let that be a barrier. Um, to coming on this journey with us. So. Awesome. That sounds wonderful. And we really can't wait to see it and be a part of it and see, you know, what we yeah. can do as Black queer people ourselves and, you know, our organization okay. as well. So thanks so much for joining us, Lee. This was fun. Thank you for inviting me. Thank of you. Of course. Racine, take us out. And most of all, thank you once again, Lee, and to Makers Lab for creating a healing space. And most of all, to the viewers. Thank you for watching.